All right, guys, so this is going to be the video on how to apply the color pencil now onto the drawing. Um, I am going to keep this very minimal. You're going to notice, and I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit more of the detail as far as how I'm applying it and how hard and so forth. But uh, we are going to keep this very minimal. You notice I do have all my colors here for the most part. Tried to put them in order uh, by the color wheel. So you guys already know how, or at least should, because we got the primary colors, which is red, yellow, and blue. And then the secondary colors are what fall in between. So like red and blue will make purple. Um, you know, and then we've got the yellow and uh, blue will make green and then yellow and red will make the oranges and so forth. Okay, so I just kept it like that so that it's easier at a look and at a glance. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see what I can do here. Let me focus. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to start adding color to this. And again, I said I want to keep it minimal. So I do want a high contrast with this. I have purples and blues in my background. So I want to use things that have a little bit more of a contrast color. If I go opposite on the color wheel from blue, the opposite color would be orange. So automatically putting something like this color is going to have that high contrast. Opposite of purple is actually yellow if I follow opposite on the color wheel. So uh, I would use like yellows and those kind of tones. So I'm going to stick more to the warmer colors. I will be adding greens and so forth on the leaves um, and any kind of like the stem and so forth for the green variation of the tones. But, um, you know, that's just because that's just what it is in real life. So I'm going to try to stick to it as natural as possible. Um, if you're going to be adding color pencil on something like this and you want to be very minimal to where it's fast, I would first kind of outline where the shadow part would be, which would be if my light's coming from this direction here. So I would do the outline first just as a guide. Uh, then what I would do is I would just take up the transition very quickly. Now, if you remember from the beginning of the year, and I believe I did the flowers with you guys, actually, uh, because this is first period that I'm recording it with. Um, I kind of showed you guys how to do the textures and all that stuff. But the whole point, again, is doing something quickly. I want to be able to do a drawing fast where it looks complete without having to add too, too much to it. So I don't recommend doing the whole entire um, look to it, but you can. It is a possibility if you wish. So I'm just going to continue. So everything that I, the way that I did this, I'm going to do it to everything over here. So I have four flowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do outline, outline. So like maybe somewhere about right here from half this way and then for sure the bottom and then outline. So think of what I said in the very beginning, it's where your shadows are. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just extend that transition towards the center. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shading, same thing for this one. And if you do the circular motion, it will work pretty fast for you to where it'll look nice and even. So I'm just going to pick up the transition towards that other area and then the same thing for this one. So I'm just going dark to light towards the middle and dark to light towards the middle. So you can see how fast I was able to add a little bit of color to that, okay? Then on the actual petals themselves, I'm gonna go ahead and use my yellow. So remember, we're thinking shadows. So I'm going to just put where I remember, if a, if a petal, excuse me, falls on top of another petal, it's gonna cast a small shadow. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow going dark to light towards here. This one's sitting on top, so I'm gonna leave that alone. So I'm only gonna put it where my shadows are. So this is on top of this, which means I should cast a little shadow right here. This looks like it's sitting on top of this, so it's gonna cast a little shadow right here. This and this and this, they're all sitting on top of each other. So on these lines, I'm just gonna go dark to light, dark to light, dark to light right here, this one looks like it's sitting here. So dark to light, right here, this little petal sitting right behind it, so dark to light. So anything that's behind something else, again, you're just casting a little tiny bit of a shadow. So you can see how fast I was able to do that pretty quick, doesn't take me very long. It's already starting to develop, it's already starting to look like it's popping out. So I'm gonna do the same thing to these. So anything that's sitting on top, this is sitting on top, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a shadow. This is sitting on top of this one, so I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow little bit of shadow. So I'm just gonna continue going with the shadow up because my petals are sitting on top of each one over here, okay? So once you figure out where shadows are gonna be, you're just adding minimal color. We're not applying a lot. 
is just push a little bit, circular motion, lift. Push a little bit, circular motion, lift towards wherever my light is supposed to hit. Dark to light, dark to light this way. Now, why I went opposite, because this petal looks like it's sitting on top. So I'm going dark to light here, dark to light over here, okay? And then this one looks a little bit right here. So I'll put a little shot. Okay, so now that I kind of have a little bit of yellow, and um, I will do the same to these, but I'm just gonna stick to these two just so you can see it properly. And then that way the video is not too long. I can go with additional colors. So like, let's just say I want a deeper shadow on it. You don't have to remember, we're trying to go for minimal, but if you do add a deeper shadow, then I would probably stick to the brown and do the same thing. I'm just gonna put a little bit over here. So wherever my deep part of the shadow is supposed to be, I'm just gonna add very minimal shading just to kind of help it pop. Do you have to do this? No, if you're happy with just that effect, that's fine. Remember on Monday, I'm gonna show you guys how to enhance it with, uh, it was pen and then also marker. So that way you don't have to do too much of the transitions. It would be more line work with those, but I'll show you guys that next week. Today, you're just concentrating on the color pencil. So if you see how I'm adding the color here, then it shouldn't take you too long. If you guys were doing the fish, I'm gonna show you an example on the screen that you guys can take a picture of. So if you guys are drawing the fish, go ahead and you guys can take a quick picture of that. Uh, so that way you can see what it would look like uh, with color. So for those of you guys that are doing that one, that's an example for you. So you can take a quick photograph of that, just so you know where to go dark to light. This one is, pushed, you can tell that I, I push a little harder on the color versus this one that I'm keeping a lot lighter. So if you don't want to push that hard on the shading, don't, but wherever the shadow is, you're just going to add a little bit and, and uh, kind of like the way the, um, what is it called? The fins. <laughs> I got lost that, that uh, word there, but the way the fins look very lightly done, it's the same thing for the body. Uh, I just wanted the high contrast between the fins and the body, but you don't have to have that, okay? And then for those of you guys um, that did the eye, I'll show you an example right now. I don't have it uh, right next to me, but I'll get one for you also towards the end. Let me see if I can spot one really quick. And if I can't, like I said, I'll get you guys an example in just a little bit for those of you guys that did the eye, okay? Um, and then if those of you guys that did the flower, you have something to look at here, but if you do want to push it more, because I'm going minimal on the flower. You can take a quick photograph of this if you want, because you can see that you can push it and you can make it more, but if you want to keep it light with just a little bit of color, then you can just keep it very light, okay? Now for the stem, just real quick as I go over this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the light green because I know that that's my highlight. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of light green. Look at how light I'm I'm touching it. I'm not putting a lot. I'm putting just a tiny, tiny bit. And I'll zoom in so you can see just a little bit better. You can see how much I'm pushing. So I'm keeping it very, very minimal, putting a little bit. Then I'm doing the same thing on this one. So I'm just going to push just a little bit circular motion so it comes out nice and smooth. I'm putting a little bit of color. I'm not going crazy on the color, especially if it's my light color. So like on these over here, I know I left them with the background color, but if I wanted to add a color, I could put maybe like a little bit of a red or a purple kind of like of the ones that I showed you on the other one. Uh, but I like that. I like that I'm seeing a lot of the background. And again, the whole purpose of this is to teach you guys how to put minimal color. So that way you can do something like this very fast, okay? And then on the shadow side, remember my light's coming from this side. This is where I'm going to put a dark green line. So I'm gonna first do it as a line first. And then I'm just going to go dark to light very quickly on the opposite side. You're going to pick it up. So circular motion and then pick it up real fast. So that way it looks like it's going into the light green. So I'll just continue that all the way. Push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. And then the same thing on this one. Push, lift. Now where it's going to really look, I'm going to go over it with you guys next class period. You're not doing it for today, okay? But where I'm going to make it look a lot nicer is when I add those other materials to it to enhance it. Right now, all you're doing is just concentrating on adding the color pencil only, okay? 
So if you did the flour, this is how you're adding it. If you did the fish, like I said, you guys should be putting the same technique as far as how I'm applying the color. You're only going to add the shadows in these areas, okay? So I'm going to at this time, let me zoom out a little bit. So I would repeat myself for these, which you saw how fast I did those. It wouldn't take me very long to finish them, but I just wanna keep the video a little bit shorter this time around. And then I'm also gonna add some green to the leaves. Now I'm gonna start off with the light green. So I'm just gonna keep very, very minimal color. Again, I don't wanna add too much because I'm showing you the technique first on having that background poke through. So that way I don't have to do too much work and it can still look like a finished piece while adding minimal color. But if you don't like this look, you're like, man, that's too little bit of color. I like it when it contrasts, I like the pop. Then you guys already know how to do that because I showed you guys, especially in the first semester, when you do color blending, then just push a little harder on your color. That's all you would have to do if you wanted to show more, okay? And then I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna do a dark line for that middle line because how it has that middle vein. And then I'm just gonna go dark to light this direction just a little bit. I'm not going heavy on the color. You can still see my background showing through and that's the effect that I'm going for on this one. So for those of you guys that do those maps for your, for your history classes later, if you have like little landmarks, have some of the map show through the color. And then when you do your landmarks, when you're coloring them, you can color them something like this, or you're just adding a little bit of color to it. When I go over the stuff with you guys on Monday, so I'm just putting a little bit of dark green on the edge over here, dark to light this one. But uh, when I go over the stuff with you guys on Monday and I show you guys how to apply the pen and the marker, that's where this is really gonna enhance because we're gonna go and do uh, stuff that's like this, where uh, I'll explain it. And this is not explained, but I'm gonna show you how to enhance certain spots and which spots you should kind of bring out. So that way you could do outlining and make it look good at the very end. Uh, when I explain it on Monday, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about anime. Not so much because I'm not a, like, it's not like I wanna, uh, what's the word? I'm not promoting drawing and animation. Some people love it and some people will just stick to that only, but it's important to learn some of these other effects first before you apply some of those techniques that they use for the outlining and so forth. Uh, but it is actually a very important thing. I also talk about uh, a little bit of tattooing uh, for the tattoo artists. Um, what's, what's important for outlining in general to still make it look realistic and good um, while having some of that technique. And a lot of these artists actually study the one of the Japanese artists by the name of Katushika Hokusai. And this particular artist is the one who did the great wave. For those of you guys that are like little Einstein fans from back in the day, <laughs> I know I was, because I watched it with my kids and stuff. They go over artists and he's the one that did the great wave. Um, so I'll show you some examples of that on Monday, just so that you can see and understand why certain things are important to highlight as outline versus other, like what actually works and what's going to actually um, make it a little bit harder for you to understand, you know, that it looks more realistic. So in a realistic way of using line work, okay, so I'll be going over that on Monday because it's too much to put into one video, but just so you know that it's, this is not the finished look. This is just to enhance some color in your image, being able to put very minimal, very fast, so that way um, you can do a very fast artwork while still looking good, okay? Um, I am going to continue doing the rest of this, so I'll add a little bit more here. You guys should be working on yours. Um, let me see if I can find while you guys are working on that just a little bit, an example of the eye, because those of you guys that did the eye, I do wanna show you a good example which I should have one here somewhere. So let me just make sure that I can find one for you guys. That has a good example, at least of shading. I, I think I had one kid that actually enhanced it a little bit. This is not 100%, like I only have these two here. I know I have some better examples, which I will share with you guys in a little bit so you can take a photograph of, but you can kind of see like they're adding a little bit of minimal color in the iris 
And then they're also putting it on the eyelid. So basically, if we go back to the original sketches, and I'm checking to see, because I think I had them right here, right next to me, so I can show you guys very quickly. Oh, that's the, up here, there we go. So let me get the one in the eye. So if I'm looking at this eye real quick, for those of you guys that did the eye, basically where you can add the color on this would be here. So like, a, like let's say it's a green eye. I would do light green here, dark green, or vice versa, do the dark green in the center, light green on the outside. Then I would put some shading here, dark to light. I would put here, like where you see this. And honestly, for this to make it look like if it's the white of the eye, pick the color of the background. So if I have blues, I would use the blue to add a little bit of shading on that. So that way it still looks uh, minimal. Now, for those of you guys that have white colored pencil, because sometimes they come in the packet, the good thing about doing the watercolor backgrounds, guys, is that you can actually add white and it will come out. This person here, for this example, this person added a white acrylic paint because they had it on the highlights. So if you want that highlight to pop out and you, let's say you have, um, and you can do this on Monday because I'll show you guys some examples. Like when I do mine on Monday, I will show you guys the paint part. So for those of you guys that have like white out, or if you have white acrylic, you can do that white color pencil because sometimes the packets do have the white Crayola. And I think I might actually have some here right next to me. So let me see if I got that, but yes, I do. So in the Crayola packet, you'll get one that's white. And some people are like, why would they put a white in a, uh, <laughs> you know, something like that. Like, I don't understand why they would add white to it. But if you get the white guys, and for example, like I had put it here on this part of the eye, you can actually, and I'll put some white right here. You can actually see some of that white. It will lighten up. It won't be too strong, but you can still kind of get it to show. So for those of you guys that want to add white, this would be the time to use it on something like this, okay? If you have paint, like white acrylic paint, it will work better, but just in case for those of you guys that want to kind of play with that. For the flower, technically, I don't have areas that would be highlighted. I guess if I wanted to add a little bit of highlight, it would maybe be to like this spot. Or if I wanted my petals to have uh, that look, I can add a little bit of highlight to it just to kind of um, add tone to it, but it's not necessary, okay? I kind of like that that background color is showing through. So I'm gonna leave it alone on mine, all right? So I'm just going to add a little bit more color to this. You guys should be applying color already to yours. I only had one person submit the photograph yesterday. Uh, and I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, it was only Candace, I believe, in this class period that submitted it. So if you guys did not submit the photograph of the outline only, which was just the pencil part, this is what I was grading. If you did not submit that picture, you need to submit it now. If you forgot to take a photograph of it and you already started this, just take a photo where it is now and make sure you upload that before you finish up the color pencil because that was part of the grade, guys. You're getting a test grade for each and every single thing. So please, guys, make sure you take time to document and photograph each part of it. But you can see how fast I'm adding this. It's not taking me too long. Um, you know, I'm explaining a lot of this. If I was doing this on my own, probably could get this done probably a little bit less than 10 minutes just because of how little bit of color I'm adding. Not adding a lot. You see that I'm just kind of just pushing a little tiny bit circular motion so that it comes out smooth and just adding very minimal color to it. Without having to push too hard and so I can move pretty quick on this. So um, you can see it's just going dark to light, dark to light and so forth on just little areas. So it won't take me too long just to add the yellow because that's all I really did. I didn't even add too much of that brown. Probably won't on the ones on the top just because uh, it'll help give the illusion to the ones on the bottom that they have a little bit more shadow work. So if I add brown to the ones that are on the top, it would probably just be towards like right here on the little middle, not so much on the petals.
So you can see how fast I'm moving on these. Now that I kind of know it's just dark to light, I'm just adding very minimal color because I want that background color to show through. It's so pretty. You know, we did a hard time like trying to get those colors. I don't want to cover it all. I want it to show through. So I'm just putting it just where I would see the shadows. And you can see how fast, now that I kind of explained it, you can see how fast it can be done. A little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. I'm putting it here to the one that's in the back, the brown, just because I want to make it look like it's further. It's smaller, so I want to make it look like it's further in the background. And then maybe just a little tiny bit on this one. Now, be careful when you're applying the colors, guys. You don't want it to look choppy. Like, I don't want to just put and then yeah no like put a little tiny bit of transition it doesn't take too long you're just lifting it slightly so it doesn't have to move too far you don't want to just mark it like you don't want to just mark it and just be like okay okay no it has to have some transition so you want to lift it just a little bit you want to lift it just a little bit so every time you guys apply a little bit of color have a little bit of transition okay if you do the side of the pencil and if you do the circular motion it's going to come out smooth okay so take your time when you guys apply it don't just add it just to add it it might look like i'm just scribbling because i'm moving fast on it but i am picking up the pressure all right so at this point the only thing that i'm missing on mine if i'm going to add color to this I have a few more uh, petals on here, but for me, the most important part, of course, is the stem. I don't want the flower to look like it's just sitting there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of color to this. Circular motion on it when I'm applying it. And then I have a, I have a leaf right here, so I'm not gonna put some there. And then I have to add the shadow. So I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow on the side and then just go dark to light. Shadow dark to light towards the opposite side. And then I also want to make sure I forgot to put it on the other ones, but I also want to make sure that when I put the shadow, it has to have a little bit right here so that the flower looks like it's sitting on it. So I'm going to go dark to light just from here to here. Just a little bit from the top to the bottom. So uh, I still have the leaves. I still have this leaf. I still have this leaf, which I'm going to be working on right now. But I just wanted to make sure that I at least get a little bit of the recording uh, on explaining how to add just very minimal color in certain spots. You don't have to have a lot. Just put a little bit, okay, with a little bit of transition. Um, so at this point, I'm going to stop the video there. I am going to finish this though. So that way, when I come back and I explain the video on Monday, it's done. Uh, so let me stop it there.